Welcome back to another camper build series video. Today we will be adding the interior trim work to the camper while also installing our exterior roof and working on our back galley. If you find this video valuable or want to see more of this build series, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. As we begin working on our interior trim, we first need to take down some measurements. Rather than measure everything at once, I like to start in one spot and work my way out from there, going piece by piece. While it is slower, I find I make less mistakes. I am using PVC 3 quarter inch round trim in all of the corners. On the seams of the ceilings and the angled portion, I use a 1 inch flat trim. You can find links to all of the materials used down in the description of this video. There are a lot of angled cuts with this interior trim. In corners where three pieces of trim meet, I have to make a double miter corner joint to make sure the pieces fit together seamlessly. I will link to a video that does a pretty good job of explaining how to do this. To install the trim, I squeeze a solid bead of quick seal kitchen and bath adhesive to the corner. I then firmly push the trim into the corner. For these top corner pieces, I use a few pieces of scrap wood to support the trim until the glue dries enough. Make sure to quickly clean up any glue that spills out. I use the same method for all of the interior trim. Although it is not shown here, I use a different caulk applied on the outside of each trim piece for a seamless look. I found that the quick seal tends to turn a little yellow when it dries, so I use GE Paintable Silicone Supreme for this. While I let the adhesive on the inside trim dry, I begin working on the back storage area of the camper. In a previous video, I installed the insulation between the storage area and the main cabin. I use a couple of extra pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood to finish off this wall, which will give me a nice sturdy surface to mount my storage shelves to. I measure out and level out my storage shelves. I make sure that the height of each shelf will accommodate the storage containers that I like to use. I use these very inexpensive 2 inch galvanized angle ties for my shelf supports. At this point it is also a good idea to go through and fill all of your screw holes with a nice wood filler. Now it is time to tackle the roof. Due to the angled section at the front of the camper, I need to cut a 22.5 degree bevel here, which is the same bevel that exists on the previously installed angled piece. Doing this with a circular saw is not perfect, but by using a straight cutting edge I am able to get this close enough that I can fill any gap with some glue or caulk and not worry about it. Here you can catch me realizing that I've made a minor miscalculation. After setting down the roof piece, I find that the end opposite the bevel does not land on a piece of 1x2 support. I am able to fix this fairly easily by removing a strip of insulation and installing another 1x2 right where the edge of the roof piece lands.
peek at the roof right before I add the exterior roof pieces. Before putting the roof pieces onto the camper, I mark out where the roof supports are and pre-drill all of my screw holes. I also add heavy duty construction glue to the supports in the roof. This plywood had a pretty solid bow to it, so I end up grabbing a large battery and a bucket of paint to try and push it down while I screw it in. finish adding both roof pieces, but there is one more step before I can be finished with the roof. I purposefully left these sheets of plywood wider than the camper. I felt it would be difficult to get the plywood cut perfectly with just my circular saw. So instead, after the sheets have been screwed in, I use my router with a flush trim bit to cut the roof pieces perfectly along the line of the exterior wall. Before moving on to install the rear wall or door of the camper, I need to prep the storage space and install my shelves. I've already filled all of my screw holes, so now I sand the wood filler down smooth. I also use my paintable silicone anywhere two pieces of wood meet. Once the shelves are installed, I add a few extra supports for the back wall to be screwed into. I use 2x3s around the edge for this. Unfortunately, my camera dies as I start installing the back wall, but let me tell you, it was a real pain. With some of the plywood warping, things don't line up straight, so I had to use a ratchet strap to encourage a good fit. going to be adding a Kills anti-mold primer to the entire surface of the camper before installing my exterior aluminum panels. So I fill any screw holes that I haven't filled yet and sand down everything in preparation for a coat of primer. I also give a quick sand to my floor because I decided to add one more coat in there. Thank you. 
One other thing I need to do is cut the hole for my ceiling fan and vent. I drill this hole first in order to reach in and move my electrical wires out of the way. I wanted to make sure that it didn't cut through them. For my final sanding, I tape off the doorways and any other holes in the camper just to keep dust from going in and also to make sure primer paint doesn't go in on my interior walls while I spray the exterior. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have found the information helpful. I do my very best to respond to every comment on these videos, so please leave a comment below if you have a question or a comment about this camper build. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. This community continues to grow and I'm excited to continue sharing what I've learned.